This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. This is bad, this is good. Can you see the difference? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 45. So it is written, the first, the first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Now, in some translations, it's, it's, it's called last Adam. In some theologies, it's called the second Adam. And this is referring to Jesus However, the spirit is not first, but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of the dust. And as the heavenly man, so are also those that are, who are heavenly. And, we, and as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we also bear the image of the heavenly man. And so there's this contrasting that there are two separate atoms. This terminology is also used in Romans. By one man sent to enter into the world, by one man salvation came into the world. But it began to dawn on me. The first Adam was commissioned and given a shepherd's staff that had power. When Jesus came as the second Adam, he had a staff of power that was not tainted by what the first Adam had done. That's why he was constantly moving in power the whole time of his ministry. Does that make sense? Let's take it a step further. The first Adam was the bad shepherd. And all, he just had one sheep. Her name was Eve. Just one. And this big garden. And he couldn't be a good shepherd in his garden. Now the second Adam comes. John 10, 11, Jesus announced, I am the good shepherd. I'm the second Adam. I got authority that the devil just wish he could get a hold of, but he can't. And this guy ain't laying it down. He is not only the good shepherd, but listen, what would have happened if Adam would have fought the dragon to his death to protect Eve? Jesus said, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Can you see the contrast here? It's all linked together. Jesus is the good shepherd. He came with the staff. Original shepherd in the garden, bad, but the new shepherd's come. And he's going to show us how to live. I tell you what, this stuff just blows my mind. There is a synchronicity in the Word of God that is beyond imagination. It is a divinely inspired book. You can't go to Buddha's writings. You can't go to the Quran. You can't go. There are more fulfilling prophecies in the Bible that there is no other book on the planet that can even hold a candle. 
supernatural. And the symmetry within the Word of God is unparalleled. But Jesus, Peter calls Jesus something other than the good shepherd after the resurrection. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Am I making you think today? Now here, Peter is, is admonishing elders. And how many know elders are under shepherds, under Jesus? Okay. In fact, let me take it a step further. Every husband is a shepherd under Jesus. Go back to the original model. And elders who are among you, I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers not by compulsion but willingness, not for dishonest gain like Adam. I just want to throw that in there. That's Mike Lake interpretation. But eagerly. Not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Well, who's the example? Jesus, who laid down his life for the flock. But look here in verse 4 what he says. Okay, he came, he was the second Adam, he was the good shepherd after the resurrection. And when the chief shepherd appears, he went from good shepherd to chief shepherd. How did he go from good shepherd to chief shepherd? Because now he's the cornerstone that every shepherd in the kingdom of God must give an account to and line up to. He is the chief shepherd appears. You will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. So this connects the staff that Adam lost, that Jesus got back, not only did Jesus get it back, we're going to find out here in a minute, there's, I'm getting ahead of myself, this stuff's this, this good. When he comes back, he's coming back with the male that Adam laid down, and he's going to defeat the Antichrist with it. When the chief shepherd comes back, when the chief shepherd appears as Messiah ben David, the conquering king, that with this, the, the, the brightness of his appearing decimates the Antichrist army, the greatest army that has ever been put together since the beginning of time. Uh, if, if God could let us see what that army looks like, I don't think we could wrap our heads around it. I think we're going to have giants. We're I mean, Bigfoot may even be there for all I know. I mean, flying saucers, everything that you can think of, Nazis, every bad thing that has ever existed on the planet, dinosaurs. Everything that they could muster as well as turning the planet itself into a particle weapon is part of what they're doing with CERN. To try to stop the one that's coming and all he has to do is the same thing he did in the garden. When he shows up, the fur flies. That's the chief shepherd that we serve. That's who we serve. But I want to connect it all together now. Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission. I have found something about God. There, when, when, when you study theology, there are things called the, the, the will of God, the, the, what, what God really wants to happen. But because he's dealing with man, there's something called his permissive will. His permissive will is he doesn't basically kill you because you said no and go do something else. And so you end up going the long way around Lot. When God said, I want you to flee to the mountains, Lot said, no, 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 I don't want to flee to the mountains. You know, I'm old. We're kind of scared. We'll go over here to this little city. Well, that little city was just as bad in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the reason God didn't destroy that city is because Lot wanted to go there. You want to talk about the permissive will of God. But then later on you read that they had to flee the city because it was so wicked. Because they thought, they're going to be toast just like Sodom and Gomorrah. What was I thinking? So you see this, you know, you God will allow you plan B, but he takes you back to plan A. You're supposed to cross over into the promised land. You refuse, so he's going to march you around in the wilderness for 40 years until he can find a generation that will be obedient and go on over. 
God always takes things back to plan A. That's why we don't, our priesthood is not under the, uh, the Aaronic priest, priesthood. It's not under the, the Levitical priesthood. Ours is under Melchizedek. Which I believe that when Melchizedek showed up to, to Abraham, I think it was what we call a Christophanes. Jesus showed up and showed him the mystery of the bread and the wine. God always takes us back to plan A. Starting in verse 16. And the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. That one always bum fuzzles me. You know, can you imagine rumors going around that I was dead, and then I show up to my funeral and there was some doubting, no, that's not Mike, he's dead. Closed casket, there's nothing in the casket because the tomb was empty. Shows up, some doubted. Jesus came and said unto them, this is the first thing he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. As the firstborn son, that's one of the reasons the Bible calls Jesus the firstborn son of God. As the firstborn son, he gets a double portion. He came with half the portion of the staff of the second Adam, but before he left hell after whipping the devil from one, you know what, that day the devil found out what hell was all about. Some try to say that Jesus suffered in hell. Jesus wasn't the one suffering. The, the greatest relief that has ever happened in all the universe when Jesus let go of the devil to cross on over and to preach to those that was in Abraham's bosom. And how many know it took the devil a while to recoup? But he had the keys of death, hell, and the grave. But the one thing that we don't cover is he had the staff of Adam. He didn't say some authority. He said all authority. I've restored it back. I've even kind of wondered if that's why David, when he was writing the 23rd Psalms, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. No shepherd went around with two staffs. But he was writing of the good shepherd. I got your authority back that you lost. Now I'm going to twin it with the authority that I have so that if you follow me and you become good under shepherds, you share of the double portion. That's one of the reasons Jesus said, okay, I'm doing ministry in my life now and I've got one staff. Those that believe in me are going to do greater works because you get the double staff after I get this thing done. Whew. That's why the Bible says that we can cast out demons in his name. We can lay hands on the sick and they're made better in his name that we can, we can, we can, we can pray and have audience with the Father in his name. Our problem is we've never understood the dynamic of the name or what we have been given, and we're trying to act more like Adam after Genesis chapter 3 than the Jesus after the resurrection. I'm not done. Not done yet. He's not done yet. He's going, he's going to take it back to plan A. Are you, are you ready to see the rest of plan A? Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Go and fill the earth, replenish the earth, malay the earth with disciples. It's the commission that was given to Adam is the great commission that we have today. And you can only do it with the authority of the shepherd's staff. You want to talk about coming absolutely full circle. You see, there, there, there's something that's supposed to happen when we really get in line with heaven. I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything before I go off my notes. We see when Israel came out of Egypt, and they were transitioning from God doing everything for them to now God was going to begin working with them. They had to pick up, when they, when they crossed over the Jordan, they had to pick up their authority. They were the ones that had to drive out the ites. Okay? And you see that when they would come, the people begin to panic and say, they have come here too. 
The ones that took down Egypt, the ones that brought down Jericho, they have come here too. There's this concept of that when God's people that are flowing the right way, we turn the world right side up. Now to the world it's upside down, but to those that really understand the kingdom, we know when something's upside down and you went your whole life upside down, we come along and turn it right side up to them, it may appear upside down. Especially if you're in sin and stuck on the world. We see the same thing in Acts. Those that have turned the world upside down have come here too. The reason the body of Christ couldn't turn over a Dixie cup, much less the world, is we have lost center on the mission. He's the chief shepherd. The more that I line up with him, the more world I turn upside down. The more that I line up with him, the more that anointing for the, for the double portion anointing of authority can flow through us. The more anointing to obey the commandments of God, what do the commandments of God do? For me personally, I find out it was the only thing that got me off of being stuck on stupid. That, I'm being real. It got me stuck. And Mary could testify, but she only has a couple hours today, so we'll, we'll do that another day. Where I just how stuck on stupid I was until I did. Because God said, these will be your wisdom. Why are they wisdom? Do this, don't do that. People pay good money for books like that. Oh, eat this, not that. Do this, don't do that. Financial advisors invest here, not here. Nobody has a problem with that. They say, oh, these people are so wise. I should, I should eat this veggie burger and not that, not that four-pound massive black Angus burger with 10,000 calories and 20 grams of fat, you know. And then you kind of wonder why your waist keeps on expanding. And we look at those guys and say, they're geniuses. But then God says, do this and not that. And we go, who does he think he is? Oh, that's been done away with. You can't prove that. Not by rightly dividing the Word of God. If God said, do this, and this is not being stuck on stupid, how many know forever it will be never being stuck on stupid? But wrapped within a commandment, and we find this out when God said, light be, the, the principle of first mention, you begin, you begin building your definition of things. God gave a commandment, and unlike man, creation didn't resist because within a commandment of God is the power to bring it to pass. That's why the Apostle Paul, when, when dealing with the whole circumcision issue in 1 Corinthians, he said circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing but keeping the commandments of God because every time you keep the commandments, it releases power into you. It aligns you with a cornerstone. I was amazed in my research. How I many know Jesus is the chief cornerstone? But you know what I found out? Moses lined up with a cornerstone. Abraham lined up with a cornerstone. David lined up with a cornerstone. Samuel lined up with a cornerstone. Ezekiel lined up with a cornerstone. Jeremiah lined up with a cornerstone. When the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians said that our faith is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, he was not speaking of any New Testament person. Moses was the first apostle. Apostle means one sent forth to do something. That was Moses. It's even contrasted that Jesus is called the apostle of our faith. He was sent from the throne to get done what he was supposed to do. An apostle. A prophet is one God comes down and visits and talks to. That was Abraham was the first one. And it was Jesus that was visiting with them. And the whole transformation of Abram to Abraham was Jesus straightening Abraham out to where he began lining up with a cornerstone and it produced Isaac. And it produced blessing. Blessing begins to flow as I'm doing the commandments of God. And sometimes I don't even need to understand the wisdom of it. This is the miraculous thing about God. 
is, in, and especially in the Hebrew, now Israel would always say when Moses would give them something, they would say, we will hear and we will do, we will hear and we will do. And so the translators kept that uniformity when they translated the English. But there's a few times in the Hebrew that it's reversed. That has been a quandary for us Gentile theologians. They say, I don't understand why they did that. Maybe Moses just got it mixed up when he was writing it down or something. The rabbis, on the other hand, look at it, and the light bulb comes on. We will do and we will hear. Because sometimes the only way that you can understand the wisdom of it and truly hear it is after you are in hindsight. How many times, Mary, have we been in situations we obeyed the commandments of God even when our flesh wasn't wanting to, and afterward we thought, man, God is smart. He kept my foot from going in the pit. He kept me from making the wrong mistake that would have drained all the money. He kept me from getting sick. He kept me, he kept me from getting hurt. I should have been dead a couple of times over. But because I yielded to the Spirit of God and kept the commandments of God and began moving in that authority, I slowly began to walk out of the very pit that I had dug for myself by disobeying the things of God. And so Jesus tells them, listen, I want you to go into all the earth all authority, I got both staves now. All authority. That, oh, no, you still don't get it. Elijah on Mount Carmel. He's challenging the prophets of Baal, which was actually the prophets of Hercules, by the way, just for those that wanted to know. They were ready to call down fire on their sacrifice, which means they had done it before. You're not going to go into a confrontation in which if you don't get it done, you die That'd be like me saying, you know what? I'm going to face off the world boxing champion. How many know there isn't a snowfalls, ch snowflakes chance in a very hot place? He wouldn't, even, he wouldn't even do this. He'd go, that's it. Because I have no, there, there was no way possible of me winning. These guys put their lives on the line saying, oh yeah, man, we got this. We got this. We call fire down we got this and they had been able to do it successfully until a man of God showed up the devil can get a lot of stuff done until a man or woman of God shows up and knows their authority and says I tell you what that's about enough of that whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and there's a lot of things right now the body of Christ has once again laid down their staff because we have been told that we don't have any, we should not have any place in politics. We should not have any place in business. Jesus said, go into all the earth, it all belongs to us. That if we're not salt in politics, it gets ransomed. Anybody see that here lately? We need to have salt in Congress. We need to have salt in intelligence agencies. We need to have, how many know having a good cop is one of the best things you could ever have? How many know the, the worst thing that a community could ever have is a bad cop? We need to have Christians that are really walking with God in the military, within police force, every aspect of society. We are the preserving factor within that that keeps it from going ransom, keeps it from going into chaos. Do we know some places on planet earth right now that Christianity is, is subjugated and it's going into chaos? What we have enjoyed in western culture cannot be accredited back to the Greeks or to the Romans but to the Protestant movement. They lined up the best they could with a cornerstone and they began getting back in the Word of God and finding out what was theirs and who they were and they began molding society based on that. Not on the ruling class, but on the common class of being in the kingdom of God. With the major emphasis on taking the gospel into all the world and making disciples and to produce something for the first time in history known as the middle class. That is a product of preaching the gospel and the Protestant movement. How many like to see some more of that going on? I'm tired of billionaires becoming trillionaires, and some of us two or three dollar heirs would like to see some more coming in, you know? And, and part of that is the product of the kingdom. 
and learning to better ourselves and developing skill sets in such a way that it honors God. That we can become men and women that are trusted because we know, we know how to submit to authority and now we can begin moving in authority to make things better wherever we are. But in America, we have been convinced we laid down the double staff. The remnant's picking it back up. We're getting into the Word like never before. Many of them have never studied the Word. They're, now that they have an insatiable appetite for the Word of God. They're getting into it and they're absolutely amazed, like I am all the time, of what's actually in the Bible and how it speaks to us in this generation. The closer we get to the end times, the closer we have to line up with the cornerstone and how he's getting ready to come back as the chief shepherd who will reward all men, who will judge all men. And we're going to begin moving in that kingdom power. Daniel spoke of it even when the Antichrist is at his zenith. There will be those who know their God and will do exploits. I want to see the remnant be that way. I want to see all of us learn the Word and begin moving in it like never before. That's why we're doing this Understanding the Kingdom series. We've got to understand what He has accomplished and what it's meant for our lives. immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.